I think the world of you as a crew chief, as a mechanic, as a mastermind of of cars and, and how to make them work and how to make fast race cars, it's not an easy thing to do, and you're one of the best at it. Um, but one of the things that I know a lot of people don't know and what we've tried to highlight on this show is what kind of talent you were behind the wheel and really what you, you know, what you were capable of. <clears throat> You could have you could have been had the had the brakes fall in the right way, a regular in the Winston Cup series. Um and so I wonder, you know, how how you deal with that. You know, do you think about it like that? Does do you feel like you could have made it that far? Yeah, I mean yeah, I think some of it. Um in the early years, I, I did think about it. Um, you know, there were still some people that were racing in the truck series and different things that I had raced with growing up. And I'm like, how in the world did I not get a ride? And those people are still out there racing. And, um, you know, and I, I mean that in the utmost respect, too. Sure. And I think that they would say that about me, too. And, um, you know, it just it just, you know, honestly, that, that year before I finally went to work for a cup team, it was, it was dark, uh, for me, you know, I, mm. I, I, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't doing very good and just really depressed and, uh, just things weren't going the way that I want them to go. And, and, um, you know, I was, you know, God, how old was I at that time? I was almost 25 years old or something like that. So, you know, making, um, uh, $250 a week at 25 years old, it, it's, there comes a time when you're going to have to do something different. And, um, you know, so when I first started, you know, cup racing, um, I honestly didn't think about it a lot. Um, you know, my first cup job was underneath, you know, uh, Dave Blaney racing and I'd always watched Dave race and respected Dave and, um, and it wasn't, but a couple of weeks and Dave loved me and he knew, what I was about and how much I wanted to win and how hard I wanted to work. And, um, honestly, I think he, that helped me because he kept, you know, pushing me up the ladder as much as he could. And, uh, he kind of got run out of that car, you know, at the end of that year and, and, uh, Penske bought that team and, and Brendan gone came in and the same thing happened with Brendan Brendan, you know, within just a month or two, you know, Brendan loved me and, and knew uh, what I was about. And I started car chief in that car and, and, um, you know, everybody, and it was people like Dale and people that knew me growing up that knew, you know, what I was about. And, um, you know, that's, that's what led me to where I am today is those relationships and stuff. And, you know, when I was car chief in that, that 77 car for, for Penske, um, it was Scott Riggs that called, wanted me to come over there and be his car chief at, at MB2 and MBV. And, um, you know, so that, you know, I remember going to that job interview with Doug Randolph and, and, um, you know, I told my wife, I said, uh, she said, you're not going to take that. Are you? Don't you think you need to stay at Penske? And I was like, yeah, I probably do. And I was like, I guess if they offer me this amount that I would do it. And it was like 20, 25% more than what I was making. And, um, so Doug offered me 25% more than what I was making. I went back home and I told my wife, I was like, I guess I'm going over there. That's what he offered me. And she goes, oh, God, yeah, you got to go over there. So I went over there and, you know, working with Scott, um, you know, they, they had not run very good. Um, and man, when I got over there, everything was messed up. I mean, you would, you would travel the car and look at the sway bar arms and himes and the spring alignment and all that stuff. And it was horrible. Like everything was bound up and, uh, the car couldn't travel. It couldn't work. And, um, you know, fixed all that before we even got the season started and went down there and we finished, um, I think third in the Daytona 500. We went to Atlanta and run top five. We went to Vegas, run top five. I mean, we were knocking out top fives, you know, every week. And um, and then it kind of got to a dead spot there in the season. And it wasn't because of the people. It wasn't because Doug was doing a bad job or anything like that. It was really because of the rotation of the cars, looking back on it. And, you know, that's stuff I know now, but I didn't know then. But you, know, you kept running the same car, and the body keeps getting messed up a little bit more and more. And the you know, the front clip gets, you know, mileaged out and all that stuff. Well, all because it was a good car, we just ran it every week and it finally just started falling apart. And, um, but you know, things just led one thing to another and, and it come about June, I, I guess we were going to Pocono and they called me in the office and said I was going to crew chief. 
and I, I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. Um, I, I don't think I was re even ready for that, but we started car chief. I uh, started crew chiefing and, and, um, been crew chiefing ever since it's been a long time now, but, um, you know, it was Scott Riggs that started that. And, um, and it was because of late models. It was because of the things that we had done, uh, against each other and together throughout my, my, my life that, that got all that going. But, but Rodney, back to Dale's question, like at what point, by the time you became, by the time you went to MB2, had you already come to terms with it? With, with, with now you're on a trajectory that seems that you have you're you're making you know 25 percent more and you're you, now you're making some money that uh that can support your family is that what helped you come to terms and sort of put some finality to the to the driving career or did you ever get to a point of finality you know i, I don't think i ever sat on a team on a pit box and thought to myself that I could do better than that person. Okay. I will say that up front. I never, I never felt that way. It was always the other people that were in like the truck series and stuff that I'm like, how's that guy still racing? Yeah. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't ever that I thought that I could hop in there and drive better than Brendan gone or better than Scott Riggs or anything like that. And, and honestly, I think some of that had come to terms even before I started racing, uh, in the cup series, because I knew, the reason I won a lot of races is because I worked on my stuff all the time and I understood it, um, you know, and, and helping people like Clayton and, and, uh, all the other people that I helped, uh, kind of crew chief, you know, like, um, you know, even though it was go-karts, it was still kind of crew chief. And then you were picking out what tires you were going to put with those guys and, and what stagger there was, and you were coaching them on how to drive. And, um, that, that part of my life, got me prepared to, to go do that stuff. And actually it was a friend of mine named Scott Munsgaard. He was, he was a shock guy and, uh, he had, he had owned his own shock business and, and got people, you know, running gas shocks in late miles, you know, before that, everybody wanted to just run, you know, 61 series careers. That was a, a monotube shock. And, uh, but anyway, Scott pulled me aside one day and wanted to go to lunch. And he said, look, he said, I know you're struggling right now. I can see it on your face. And me and him were, were great friends at the time. And he knew I was struggling. And he said, look, you just need to go work for a cup team. He said, I've been on a cup team for three years now. He was at Jasper at the time. He said, you're smarter than anybody there. Mm. And he said, there's no reason that you can't succeed doing something other than driving. He said, you just need to, you need to look at different Avenue. And at that time I had just met Katrina and, you know, realizing that I did need to make money. And, and, uh, so, you know, to answer your question, I, I kind of got over it to begin with and, and wanted to just go make money and wanted to win races a different way. And, um, I never went back and I haven't run a single late model race ever since. I was, and I was going to ask you, uh, what's, what's the last time you raced? Um, I think, uh, I think maybe a couple of years into it, um, Mark wanted me to go run a big money champ cart race down in Carnesville, Georgia. And we went and did that, uh, and finished third. But, you know, other than that, I, I still go ride some go-karts over at GoPro, but I, I haven't raced at all. Um, you know, I, I could have, you know, with what I've done throughout my career, yeah, I could have paid somebody and got the best car and go run late model race every now and then, but that's not, that's just not me. I, I, I don't really have any interest in it. You know, me and you have talked about just running laps at Hickory on a yeah. test day and stuff. That would be, that would be fun, but man, just going out there and taking a chance on getting hurt or, or doing something right now probably isn't the right thing for me. Um, you know, trying to win another cup championship and trying to win cup races is, is the most important thing. How many more, uh, how many more years do you think you got as a crew chief and, not to not I'm not trying to rush you into retirement. My my question really is about what's next cuz you're not you're certainly not just a championship crew chief. There's got to there's there's more, you know, you're 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 overqualified almost for that role at this particular point in your life. Um what what's next for you and 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 do you do you even think about that? Do you even think about like having an opportunity to to, to run an organization or manage a shop? Um, you know, manage a team from the top? Yeah, I, I, I really don't know yet. Um, you know, I've went through different swings. Uh, when I was at Waltrip, um, you know, we were doing the, the part-time deal with, with uh, Mark and, and Vickers and, and um, Michael. And 
I kind of got to the point then that I was, um, you know, when I knew Mark wasn't going to run anymore and, and all that, I was man, I, I'm kind of the point that I just want to stop and I'll do some kind of management role or I'll do something like that. And, um, and then that's kind of when the opportunity come about with Kevin and that, you know, the, the deal with Kevin completely changed things and, uh, my, my outlook and, and, uh, all that stuff. So, you know, right now I want to win races as long as he wants to win races and I want to win championships as long as he wants to win them. Um, you know, when he's done, I don't know what I'll do because hmm. I think, you know, I, I think we have something that it's just hard to come by and, um, I don't think it'll ever be the same, you yeah. know, uh, you know, if, if I had to say a person that, um, that I would want a crew chief after Kevin, it would probably be Blaney just because I started my career with mm. Blaney. And, um, you know, I, I love that family and, and all that, that goes on there. And, um, and I, you know, Ryan probably thinks the same thing, but, um, I don't know. I used to think I wanted Zippy's job, and now I look at it and I'm like, man, I don't want his job. <laughs> Heck with that. <laughs> Who wants that so, job, right? Um, and then, you know, you look at the NASCAR side of it, and it's like, you know, would you want to go to the NASCAR side of it? And some days I'm like, yeah, it would be cool because I think I could help things. I could yeah. help the sport. Uh, and then other days I'm like, man, I don't want it in the middle of that. Right. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it, you know how it is. Things change over and over. I'm not the, I'm not the personality the to probably be on radio or TV and all that. And I'm, I'm not the Latart <laughs> of the crew chief and, uh, deal, but, um, you know, I just, I just want to work and, um, uh, you know, I want to make money and want to have a good family and, and enjoy life. And, um, you know, I've tried to, to, to do a little bit more of that lately, but, uh, you know, it's still about winning races. Yeah. Um, I could see you a cup series director or something like that. That'd be pretty incredible. You know, some of the best years the sport I ever saw was when, the garage was governed by uh, crew chiefs, pa oh, you know, retired crew chiefs like uh, oh, yeah, Gary Nelson. Go, yeah, they go to work for NASCAR. Yeah, I mean, you knew you weren't getting – you knew that oh, everything yeah. was going to be yeah. on the up and up. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Rodney Childers worked for NASCAR one day, running, running the garage. Is that what you're suggesting? If they if they can afford him. Hey, let's let, let <laughs> – if they can afford him, right. 25% more than what he's making now. That's, that's hey, what we saying, know. It ain't going to be cheap. You want the best. You got to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs>